If there's anything in life that I will do forever, it's paint. I know myself when I'm painting, early, early days I might have one moment a day, one moment a week, but that was enough just to make me want to do more and more and more. Now I, 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 I see them more, the moments, so that's probably why I'm even more addicted. And it's only a moment, it could be completely self-indulgent, probably is, but it's a good moment, so you, you, I chase them. I've spent 10, 15 years wondering, searching, looking, did lots of travelling and um, a billion jobs. I think I had 50 full-time jobs by the time I was about 23. And then I found out about this art school in Sydney and um, applied for that and luckily got in. So that was sort of like the start of life. <laughs> I was about 26 or so and it was fantastic and it was a studio based school and you just did your thing. I only did oil paint there. Still lives and um, landscapes. Probably verging a little bit towards abstract but realistic in my eyes, yeah. Well paint was the thing I sort of gravitated towards but I did a lot of sculpture too and then I sort of just had to weigh up sculpture or paint. I remember that like five minutes before going in it was paint, sculpture, ah, but paint one. And I had an auntie too that I used to, um, Helen Stewart and she used to paint and I used to go and sometimes sit with her and tattoo around in the studio a little bit. So it's in the blood for sure, yeah. When I left art school in Sydney I had a great bunch of mates and we were all Philly serious and um, yeah so we exhibited a lot but I was going into this um, abstract world and I felt I didn't really know what I was doing and part of it was uh, a little bit scary, um, I was a bit unsure so I, I um, had a look on the net and then I found this class at TLC and it sounded perfect because it was eliminating all the things you can see and um, you know, just going with feeling, which is ultimately where I like to be. Masterclass pretty much um, takes you to a space. You try and lose everything you know and try and learn a whole lot of new stuff. It was incredibly, um, probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, learning wise. It's sort of one of those courses you do and it's not for the next five years before you actually go, ah. Oh. spare time I paint and financially I didn't have the surface so then I'd just paint what I had in my room. Anything, jugs, furnitures. And then I started looking at objects and so I'd go to op shops and actually source out the objects whereas before they were just what, was, what I had there. So most people I know have got, um, you know, objects of mine sitting around. Well, I, I do do a lot of um, wine glasses and I mean, I've got a, belt, a box over there full of hands, you know, and they're always quite good sort of gifty things anyway. And To be 
honest, I can't think how I got into the mannequin thing. Oh, I think I just got one and then uh, painted it and then suddenly thought, oh, they're quite fun. And so then I ended up buying out a shop <laughs> and um, they were sitting nicely in my mum's garage. When I first started I had a studio the size of a cupboard and I worked accordingly in there and spread all around the house of course but yeah I think any size you have doesn't really matter. I'm working for the Learning Connection. I've been offered the job of painting all the buildings. The building was about to be painted grey. And then Jonathan Milne, who runs the Learning Connection, actually approached me and said would, you know, he'd seen some of my paint and liked it. So he offered me the idea of painting it. When I first heard about it, I nearly cried because it was like, wow, that's a really cool offer. So the first wall took a long time because it was like something so new and we sort of had to build the scaffold as we went and then it's become faster and faster. The first paint I did, I was a bit unsure and um, it just took a couple of emails to Jonathan. He'd go, don't worry about it. Oh, oh okay, keep going, <laughs> sweet as. There's probably about at least 10 layers of paint on that plus and lots of, I guess, doubt and all those things that creep in. But um, when I finished that, it was quite cool because I brought in a couple of mannequins and whacked them about and did some funny things and sort of brought the object back in as well a little bit, put hands and drains and all sorts of stuff. So that just sort of felt like complete. It's not finished, but it's complete. It's all sort of st stuck on a similar theme and you know, you can only paint what you know. I like to paint what I don't know. It's the best job I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it's been really consuming, but a good consuming, like, um, yeah, I just feel grateful often. Just the fact I can get up, I can be in any frame of mind, or I can just be myself and just rock up to work anytime I want. It sits with me, like when I've finished some days, I think, oh, I've got to go back and just fix that little bit, you know, so it's, it's with me all the time. Maybe give us a few years and I'll sit back and actually look at what I've done. I still am quite involved. I've had a couple of offers about doing churches and I thought that would be just sweet because I love belief, you know, and I believe in paint. I've um, been collecting all my tins for five years now, since I've been out the wall. I've got them all. <laughs> and then I was mucking around, I thought, oh, I really want to do something with these tins. And then I started crushing them under my car. Yeah, some of them just look quite neat. Yeah, like a diary of life at the wall. You see that? That excites me. You've got the black underneath, and then you've got these colours that feed into it. And eventually, you could cover that all up until it's just one colour. But there's a whole lot of stuff going on underneath, and I like that. This piece is like the diary without words for the wall. I got my palettes off the, off the tins 
and then I use all, you know, just where I've mixed all the colours and then I peel that off. That's what they look like, these massive big plasticky beautiful things of paint and then they, the slice shows the history of the colours coming through and then I've just cut them all up and I put, I happen to have this box my cuz gave me and it's a, uh, so it just worked perfectly. That's probably the, the beginning of the diary because I just wanted to have, I mean I write but um, you know just seeing all those, you know that's uh, it's a thousand words to me each day there, I reckon. <laughs> I shy from um, being too descriptive about what I paint, because at the end of the day it is just paint. You know, you can kill a piece of work with too many words. My work. I mean, a lot of other work really suits it, but I think mine sort of hopefully just gets to a place that's quite reachable and people can see what they see in it. And I work uh, honestly from my heart, so, you know, what words do you say for that? <laughs> yeah, life as an artist is probably one of the hardest apprenticeships you could do in your entire life, because the apprenticeship never finishes. So you're constantly at the whim, and you're constantly fighting with control and I try to lose control. Well, I don't even have to try there, I just do. I'm aware of what my paint needs to do sometimes. Sometimes I'm not. I think one of the biggest things of being able to be an artist is to handle your own company, just to know how far you can go, just to battle with fear and all those things that are just normal. But if you want to be a good artist, I think you have to just fight that and um, win. <laughs>